Hi everyone, I'm Mike from Apollo Advisors and today we're doing a 15 point checklist. We're going to go real quick. This is going to be a checklist for you to use before you start development of your product or your service. This will help you make development faster and more efficient, but more importantly, it's going to help you build a product that's actually worth building. So let's get stuck in. Number one, has your idea been changing over time? If your original idea hasn't changed, developed and iterated over weeks or months or years, then really that's a proxy for me saying that you're not learning anything and any good idea should change and grow over time. So your big question before you write code is, did you change your product idea at least two times? And did you do that on the basis of learning and discovering what your customers wanted? Okay, that's number one. Number two, have you actually gone out and heaven forbid, talk to real customers? Uh, step one in that would be to do some quick surveys, use tools like Typeform, SurveyMonkey. Have you actually surveyed at least 50 of your customers to verify that what your product is actually doing, the, the job to be done that it addresses, is that, um, is that really reflective of the pains that they experience and the gains that they're looking for? So have you actually talked? Have you actually surveyed 50 customers to confirm that you're actually solving a problem that they want to have solved? All right, moving right along. The next one here is, did you do one-on-one -on -one interviews with at least 10 of your customers? This is a bit different to the surveys that I just mentioned. These interviews, you should be really looking to understand their behaviors, their motivations, and you're really trying to understand how your solution fits into them. If you haven't done 10 user interviews prior to coding, you're wasting your time with your development. All right, now that you're building a really good image of what your customers need, you should prototype it. You can use paper, pens, you name it, stickies. You can use it on a whiteboard. You can even prototype with tools like Envision, Adobe XD. But these are ways of not having to write code and testing your idea. You can actually create something that really feels like your final product or service, your final app. But have you actually gone and prototyped this with your customers? Because you would be able to see, are they able to get the task done? Are you actually solving the problem? If you haven't done any prototyping with users before writing code, you're going to waste a ton of your code. Next one, you set out on a big mission. This is your company, whether it's a startup or the enterprise. But the real question here is, does what you do in this product, does it really serve the vision of the company? And a vision should always be about looking forward to a future state of how you're going to have impact on the world and your customers. You have to really be able to ask yourself, how does this new product or service that we're building serve that. And you should be debating this and you should be validating this because sometimes you can be a little off track. You can be very far away from your original mission. So I really suggest that before you write your code, check in on that vision statement and say, are we serving that vision statement? Is this the best step forward? All right, here's the next one. Number six, do you have a clear argument for which horizon your product matches? Sometimes, and this is particularly in the enterprise, your product is like a defensive strategy. That's horizon one. Maybe it's a bit of an expansion, bit of a growth strategy. That's horizon two. Where a lot of startups tend to play is horizon three, transformation. This is not just creating a new product, but creating a whole new business model. Which one of those are you? Prove it. And you know, if you're thinking, hmm, I'm not sure here, go to apolloadvisor.com check out our academy. We have a whole course on product discovery and that will show you how to kind of actually get into this horizon planning. Number seven, can you argue for industry and consumer trends that your product takes advantage of? Now, here's the really cool thing. You will probably find that there are different trends happening in business. Uh, buy now, pay later, that's been a huge trend. Microfinancing, that's an example. Now on the te technology side, if you were to look at finance, definitely like blockchain uh, or contactless payments, those are good examples. But the truly greatest startups and the greatest products don't just leverage one of those. They tend to have this trifecta between a consumer trend, a tech trend, and a business trend. 
So the big question is, what trends are you taking advantage of? And can you make a clear, valid, cohesive argument for which trends your product is taking advantage of? NPS, oh my gosh, this is such an important checklist. Have you examined existing data such as NPS and reviews that are relevant to this use case? For example, if you're an existing enterprise, are you looking at your NPS data as a signal to what you should go build? Or if you don't have any existing product, go and create an NPS survey of people using the best case solution as of today. So if you're re reinventing the automotive sector, get people's NPS from their current driving experience. This is really powerful data to inform your product. Okay, so you've got this clear idea about what you wanna build, the outcome of how you might want to solve a problem. But there are different ways of solving a problem. And what I would always encourage you to do as a checklist for product discovery is have you truly examined two different ways of solving the same problem? So you might do that in the user interface. You might do that at an application level or even at a data level. Regardless of which one of those, it is really important that you try sort of an A-B test of two different ways of solving the same problem, because you'll be surprised there are so many ways to create a product, so many different approaches. You should at least have had two that you have compared to make sure the one that you went with is the best. Okay, number 10, we're getting through it. Did you make a Lean Canvas? If you don't know about Lean Canvas, head over to apolloadvisor.com. We have uh, templates there for you in the product discovery course. But really, this is a key thing. You don't have to write a full business plan, but you at least need this Lean Canvas to summarize your approach. And in particular, there's two here on screen that I'd really uh, point out. Number one is, have you really got a robust unfair advantage? And two, a unique value proposition. These are really what are going to determine your success above and beyond anything else is your capacity to do things differently and uniquely. So make sure you have your Lean Canvas. Okay, so you're building a team. Uh, it's exciting. You're getting all sorts of uh, creative people, business people, tech people. The thing is beyond all of those skills are behaviors. Creating a new product is full of unknowns and requires a really tight working team. So here's my ultimate three things you need when you're recruiting people. They need to be collaborative and really great communicators. Two, they need to be adaptable and flexible. And three, if I was going for anything, that they are of a growth mindset. They love to continuously learn and improve. So don't just get people who've got skills, get them with good behaviors too. Number 12, did you draft a lean hypothesis? This should come off the back of your lean canvas. This is a testable, precise statement. You can break down. If you wanna know more about how to do that, head over to apolloadvisor.com. Check out the product discovery course. We have a whole bunch of thinking on the lean hypothesis. So do you have one? Okay, do you have a clear time-based roadmap for your MVP? Sometimes MVP development can go on and on and on. You have to be careful for that. Uh, never shipping, it's a huge problem. Make sure your roadmap is really tight and literally make it as lean and as minimum as possible. All right, write down all your learnings so far. So before you actually build, make sure you write them all down. You know, Think about all the different slight pivots, changes, tweaks that you did and why you did them. Imagine that you're writing that for someone who's gonna join the company later. It's a really good exercise to be clear on what you've learned. And as I've said, learning is crucial when you're building a new product. Okay, lastly. Together with your team, have you actually mapped, outlined, and highlighted or flagged the risks that you have in development? For example, development is full of unknowns on technical dependencies, access to resources. Uh, I've got a whole list here, legal, security, all of these sorts of things that are gonna come up during development. Have you actually identified them? You're gonna have them. You wanna to speak to other people who've built similar products, but it is crucial because then you don't have those terrible uh -oh moments where you didn't see something coming and it really damages your effort to getting live. So make sure you've identified those key challenges you face in development. All right, that's a really quick tour through our 15 point checklist. I hope you are that much closer to building a killer app. And I wanna thank you for joining me on this 
uh, journey of learning. I hope that you've really got into this idea of product discovery. It's one of the most powerful things you can do to shift from guessing what customers want. You don't have to guess anymore. You can actually know what they want and that helps you in design, development, not only to get live, but thereafter to grow your product too. So if you want to know more, head over to ApolloAdvisor.com. We'll see you later.